The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of KSMQ Public Service Media Incorporated or its assigns. Tonight on Health Connections, we continue our discussion about the statewide health improvement program. Hello, I'm Sean Riley, and you're watching Health Connections. We're continuing our discussion of the statewide health improvement program. Tonight we are uh, gifted with our guests from uh, four counties, from Freeborn, Moore, Steele, and Dodge. And uh, thank you, ladies, for again joining us for this discussion. So, so the program, the SHIP program, has four key areas to it. Uh, could someone kind of start off with what those areas are and we'll go from there. Yeah, I guess well our four areas to start with are one is schools and for schools we're working on comprehensive nutrition policies. And the second one is work sites and uh, in our work sites we're working on really an overall culture of wellness so it can be everything from being active to the nutrition to the vending machines, whatever a work site feels is the action plan that's best for them. And in the community, we're looking at increasing physical activity, non-motorized transportation, getting people actually physically active, taking their bike to the grocery store versus walking, just being more involved. And in our healthcare site, we're working on developing relationships amongst healthcare professionals and community leaders and building some active referral systems to help uh, individuals in communities access um, the correct information and resources for them to help with tobacco cessation and obesity um, reduction or prevention. Okay. So as uh, four out of the nine different counties that are all working together on this process in this part of the state, uh, tell me a little bit about how you landed on these four areas and what it is that you intend to how you're, you're taking these areas forward, so. Well, as a total group of nine counties, we came up, each county had to, to narrow down the interventions, which were over 20 interventions. We had to narrow it down to two interventions per site, per community, per work site, per, you know, health care and per schools. And then we all got together as a group and voted on which interventions we felt would mo be most beneficial to work on in our nine county area. So that group that uh, you brought together was made up of? We had uh, two individuals from each county. Uh, we have a regional uh, coalition team. And on that team, we have our ship coordinators. We have our directors, if they're able to make it, of public health. And then we also have community members, one community member from each county. And so um, of those three individuals, two from each county were able to vote on which interventions we wanted to work on. Okay, so you had really an integrated process between the departments of health, the local health units, mm -hmm. and then the community aspects at the same time. Right. Yeah. So, so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with these four kind of yeah groups, we you know picked them based on our local needs, what our interests were, and then within those areas that we picked, mm -hmm. there's kind of a variety of things you can do, and that's kind right. of what's cool about our region is that some of the areas we're doing similar things. And in some of the areas, we're doing different things. So, well, tell me, tell me about the variety. We could start out with school. Yeah, let's do school. Okay. Let's do schools. Um, one of the things that I'm doing in Dodge County with the schools is some farm to school programs, where the produce is grown right here in Minnesota and shipped to the school. Like we did one in Dodge Center at Triton School, where their spring greens or their um, yeah their spring greens came from Lenora, Minnesota. So they traveled 72 miles versus typically coming from California and it was over 1,900 miles. So we did a lot of promotional things with it. We gave out stickers to the kids. We talked about it. We let the kids feel the asparagus. And just the excitement that we had, it 
was quoted as being festive in the cafeteria the day the food was served. And from kindergartners to seniors, they were excited about getting just a sticker for trying one bite of the asparagus. They got kindergartners to eat asparagus. Mm -hmm. Got kindergartners right. yeah. to eat that's, asparagus. That's where they have applause all by itself. Yes, <laughs> pictures yeah. of it. Yeah, because yeah. 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 normally when you put a new vegetable out, mm -hmm. kids are like, no, no way. way. Yeah. That's why we want to make it fun. And that's kind of what farm to yeah. school is. Like Sherry said, you know, made it, make it fun, have mm -hmm. the kids learn about it, give them a sticker for trying it. and. And what's your new nickname now at the school? I'm the asparagus lady <laughs> at the school, and I was at the pool the other day, and I'm like, hey, it's asparagus lady. So. <laughs> nice. They so, talk. so for Dodge yeah. County, then, if you're doing uh, the asparagus program in Triton, do you do the same thing for Casson or not necessarily? It's up okay. to each individual school what they want to work on, and they do assessments and find out what would be best for their school. So maybe it's vending machines. We want to look at what's available in their vending machines, or. Um, asparagus in the vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the vending machine, sure, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe their classroom incentives and fundraisers at their joints. There's really a wide variety of things that we can do with the nutrition, mm -hmm. but that's what they chose will work best. And that's kind them. of, I guess, why we chose is that um, for evaluation piece, all the schools that we're working with either did the school health index from the CDC or mm -hmm. the... Or the healthy school builder. Mm -hmm. And so based mm -hmm. on the results of those, then we kind of directed our interventions to what what their needs were kind right. of. Mm -hmm. So you do have a few commonalities that you use and then you kind of build off of that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what did like uh, Steele County do in comparison? Steele County in the schools right now with Blooming Prairie, um, Medford and Ellendale Middle School. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they are all working on their wellness policy and really making some re-clarifications or redefining to improve some of like not using food as a reward in our school systems for different things, improving um, options maybe at concession stands to have fruits and vegetables possibly or you know like string cheese versus just hot dogs and potato chips. Um, there's a school garden started in Washington, at Washington Elementary in Owatonna. Um, so there's, there's, again, different schools are working on, on different projects. So in, in Moore County, we have some elementary schools that have um, decided to, to, to do the nutritional snack carts. So that way, every child in that mm -hmm. school will get a nutritional snack in the morning before, you know, between breakfast and lunch. Some kids come to school and haven't had breakfast. So if they don't have to wait until noon or 1 o'clock to have lunch, it gets to be a long morning for them. Mm -hmm. So they're all going to be getting a nutritional snack which we think is just great. <laughs> in Freeborn, we're, we're working on farm to school, and uh, all of the elementary schools in Freeborn County are also going to, they, they've already have their mini grants to buy snack carts for the elementary schools, so they'll mm -hmm. be working on that. I guess a different, uh, different program that we did early in the season was um, a mixed-use school and community garden. Mm -hmm. And um, that has just been a tremendous success. It's on school grounds, so it took school board approval. Mm -hmm. uh, the city tilted and put in a water hookup, so it took uh, city council approval. AmeriCorps volunteers are helping with the children. 4-H Extension is doing the educational piece. And it's a huge, huge garden, the children's portion of it and uh, we have picnic tables out there. So it's actually uh, a program where the Children's Center, the Summer School of the Y, the Rock, which is a school-age summer program, they all are using that. It's like an agricultural field trip. And then the children at Halverson have their own gardening club, and this week when summer school is in session, 75 children just from the from Helverson are using the garden along with the other groups that are using it as a field trip and I, I think PTO was very supportive of it it's it's been an excellent project with a lot of collaborative parts to it and uh, I think that's something we can carry into other areas sure yeah sure mm -hmm. and really so, bringing all those groups together yes yeah. that's bringing those groups together is as important as the project itself. Right. Sure. So kind of talking about bringing some other areas into it, I had heard from the Steele County one thought, one thing that you mm -hmm. said is stopping to use food as a reward. Mm 
Yes. No, I think this is, yeah, yes. this is kind of a Midwest, Minnesota, <laughs> everything, maybe yeah, just uh -huh. humanity now. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've got to the point where every time we celebrate something, we just shove something in our face. Yeah, yeah. give a food yeah. for mm -hmm. reward. Right. Candy. And yes. one of the biggest problems I have is at work mm -hmm. doing that. So what, mm -hmm. is there another focus here, one of your other core areas to, to kind of go after that workspace? And what are some thoughts on that? Definitely, and I think that's part of the comprehensive work, work site wellness, and that's you know another issue with food and even mm -hmm. you know Christmas parties and celebrations. People bring in their leftovers. You bring them in because you don't want them at home because you don't want to eat them. But it's okay <laughs> to mm -hmm. share them with all your people. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So that's one mm -hmm. of the things you can look at in work site mm -hmm. wellness too, and we it, have some mm -hmm. work sites yeah. looking at it. If you're going to bring it in, okay, that's fine. We don't want to take that away, but also bring in a healthy option. Maybe bring in some fruit or a vegetable, and it'll get eaten too because everyone likes free food. So, so instead of having donuts for every staff meeting, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. you can bring in some fruit or some mm -hmm. oatmeal or something a little bit on the healthy side. Yeah. Yeah. But really trying to change that culture, that worksite culture where we think, right. you know, yeah. food is mm -hmm. the answer. Food has to be mm -hmm. brought in for mm -hmm. every... So if you got to the point of formalizing some projects around the work sites and trying to, to try to attack that more than the, the, a little bit anecdotal that we're at this point, but what are some of the, maybe the formal projects? In Otana, we held a work site wellness mm -hmm. conference back in okay. April with a nationally known speaker, Mark Fenton, on mm -hmm. pedestrian, bicycle friendly mm -hmm. communities. Um, and he spoke mm -hmm. to the work sites. There was about 60, I believe, people in attendance mm -hmm. from various sectors of the county in work and outside of Steele County as well. Um, and there are, from that uh, conference, there are industries in town that are looking at vending machine options. Can we make some changes there? What can we do to encourage more physical activity at work of our employees? You know, those 15 minute breaks. Can we have a, white, a walking path around mm -hmm. our company? Mm -hmm. uh, walking meetings. The uh, walking meetings mm -hmm. has been discussed. Right. We don't need mm -hmm. to sit for every meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, price, so those, are, right. Price differentials with the vending machines, making your water cheaper than your diet mm -hmm. pop and your diet pop cheaper than your regular pop and just trying to make it more obvious that it's cheaper and healthier to choose those decisions or using some type of icon in your vending machine that denotes what's healthier. A lot of it deals with education and, and even going back to the schools, that's one of the things that I know Austin Public Schools is working on, their, their vending, and they've really got pretty good vending choices, but they want to get a system where maybe they'll use um, red dots, yellow dots, green dots, and the red dots mm -hmm. would be poor choices, the poorest choice. Just educating the children, educating the parents on what are good choices. They handed out brochures mm -hmm. to all the elementary school children this last year on healthy snack choices. And so we're just trying to get the word out there. We had those in both English and in Spanish. So, so in that workforce component, mm -hmm. how do you get these organizations engaged? Well, on the workforce component, we're um, in Albert Lee mm -hmm. and in Freeborn County, we're a little bit ahead on that one because we were fortunate to be the first blue zone. Mm -hmm. And so we started on some of this, what turned out to be our interventions <laughs> a little earlier. So we have quite a few work sites um, that already had signed the blue zone pledge mm -hmm. that we've been able to come in with the ship intervention and just, you know, start right where we left off and move forward. Mm -hmm. So um, we're looking at, we have a lot of companies that already have wellness committees, already have walking mm -hmm. tracks, have changed vending machines. Mm -hmm. They are finding that healthy choices when brought in for a staff meeting are chosen before the donuts, which was a great surprise to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, there, what we're doing in Freeborn County is we're working through the Albert Lee Freeborn County Chamber of Commerce. Sure. The goal f for sustainability, for the companies to have what they need in resources, mm -hmm. is to set up a standing committee with the Chamber of Commerce. All Chamber of Commerces have a governmental affairs, they have business and education. None of them, as far as I know, have a wellness committee. Mm -hmm. So th the goal is when SHIP leaves that there be a wellness committee, that this be the piece that, you know, where, where people can get together and talk about 
things that they've done that you know have really impacted their work site and share their ideas. A mm -hmm. lot of what's going on in all the interventions is communication between different groups and different people involved. For us, that's been mm -hmm. a great mm -hmm. thing. It's, it's the sharing of ideas and the, and the actions that really work that, you know, can really change things. Mm -hmm. And I think industry is really, really, really on board they to be looking really at ways to decrease mm -hmm. their health care costs because right. those costs yeah. of obesity and tobacco mm -hmm. abuse are growing mm -hmm. for their companies as well and their individual employees within their companies. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at the return of investment right. too. If they put money yes. into this, if they put time into mm -hmm. this, you know, they can mm -hmm. see those insurance costs drop and they can see reduced absenteeism right. and right. which is the whole goal of SHIP. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> Economic development depends on, you know, quality right. workforce. Right. Mm -hmm. Healthy right. quality and workforce, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's also some uh, maybe some expansion on that being uh, in leadership roles and as a, I sit in a leadership role myself, right, my job is very mental and my fingers are extremely thin but the rest of me not so much. And I think a lot of leadership roles in a lot of these companies that kind of see that same thing in themselves. So maybe they don't have to really stretch it all the way to money even they can stretch it to their personal life in some sense. Mm -hmm. any, any feedback on that at all that maybe people are um, really starting to look inward and more than just the, the, just the money side of things? Yes, it is. It's uh, you know, mental attitude. There's more to health than just the body, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's something that has been overlooked is that, uh, you know, mental attitude, uh, you know, who, who you hang out with, you know, what has as much to do with your health as how much activity you have. And I think in the workplace, they're fine, you know, the workplaces are finding that, for example, uh, one workplace may need uh, stress management classes or more physical activity because mm -hmm. the work site itself is geared to uh, computer work, people are sitting at desks. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges that we face is we'll have one business that is uh, like the one I just described, and the next business that you go to is an industry, it's a manufacturing job. Mm -hmm. They don't have a problem with getting enough physical mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. However, maybe that particular business, it's how do you relax during break time? So it, it depends on the business, mm -hmm. which is why we left that intervention more in the area of a culture of wellness mm -hmm. because what my business needs may not be what your business would need to reach a culture of wellness. And that's again assessments we do. Yes. Right, it's one of the first of steps assessed. of you know mm -hmm. going into a work site is to do yep. those. But across mm -hmm. the state of Minnesota, 75% of Minnesotans do not eat enough fruits and vegetables to prevent disease. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one of the focuses as increasing intake of fruits, vegetables, whole grains in all of these sites really. Well, one of the metrics I saw just recently from the Minnesota Department of Health is 89% of the state is either obese or overweight. Right. And if you look mm -hmm. at just that huge aspect, it will take a, a community effort of all right. sources to enact a mm -hmm. culture change. Yes, yes. right. And it's oh, a culture yes. change. Right. Mm -hmm. right. 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 So, so one of your, your core areas here is community. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, how are you engaging uh, really on, on all aspects? You've got workplace, you've got schools, um, definitely that covers almost everyone, but it covers them at a different mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. So from the community, are there aspects of bringing in the, the medical institutions, the other healthcare providers, uh, maybe medical homes, those type of things. What, what's involved there in integrating that? Well, healthcare is a site on its own that needs to be worked on in addition to schools, um, the, the community, meaning the city, the county kind of officials, and then our, what did I miss, ladies? Work sites. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, so healthcare intervention is an intervention on its own and do that collaborating with other healthcare professionals mm -hmm. and community leaders. But as a community, the intervention our region has selected is um, not food related, but it is 
activity related. Activity related. related. It is increasing mm -hmm. access to non-motorized transportation. Mm -hmm. And as a region, we hosted this Mark Fenton to yes, speak. Yes, for an active living. For an active living mm -hmm. presentation for a day, which okay. was fabulously mm -hmm. attended and a fabulous, energizing day. Yeah. Share the walking audit that he did. I didn't go on it. Who went on it? I did. I went on the one in well, Otana, but yes. not. Yeah. You He's did. He's led a walk mm -hmm. on it, and what that looked at is how safe and accessible is it for you to get from your home to the school? How mm -hmm. easy is it to, for you to get from your home to your place of worship, to the grocery store, to mm -hmm. get those fruits to and vegetables park. that we talked about, to mm -hmm. the park? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how many people are doing it? What are the obstacles mm -hmm. that are in your way? and kind of taught us how to look at those things, maybe slow down the traffic, make it safer, look at the community mm -hmm. as a whole. And mm -hmm. so we learned how to take that back to our own communities in our mm -hmm. county and can do our walking audits on our own mm -hmm. and see, you know, would it make sense to paint a bike lane down the street because there aren't sidewalks and sidewalks mm -hmm. aren't gonna come, but people are walking down it or biking down it anyway. Mm -hmm. So how can we make those things more accessible to our community? And make that healthy choice the easy choice. Mm -hmm. And even looking at it for our yeah. seniors, you know, because mm -hmm. can someone in a wheelchair, someone with a walker cross an intersection right. mm -hmm. in a short period yeah, of time? Yeah, or would you let yeah. your child cross mm -hmm. that intersection? And mm -hmm. so really looking at, you know, society from all ages right. mm -hmm. so that, you know, from age yeah. to age right. is what he said. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He used Stewartville as an example because it was close to where the convention center was, but uh, Oatana, had a walking audit yep. in, and it's yep. meant to do in your city. Mark Fenton did theirs, Dan Burton did ours, and Albert Lee. It, they're, it's a very, very eye-opening experience mm -hmm. to look, to walk around your community and see it, not from the eyes looking out of a vehicle, mm -hmm. but truly, you know, on foot, how a, how a pedestrian looks at the city mm -hmm. and does. Uh, it's, and little goat very, trails that are established. Mm -hmm. Where you, <laughs> you know, see those. people really want to walk. <laughs> right. There is no sidewalk, but there is a trail but there is because in, people are yeah, using yeah, it yeah, as yeah. a uh -huh. passageway. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So each of you has talked about how you've engaged the cities, but the four communities or four counties that are represented here are actually pretty rural, or at least mm -hmm. roughly right. half the population is mm -hmm. uh, in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. um, they're physically wide areas. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. From a, something like this, how do you engage the the rural population as well? Some of our rural populations, like I you know Ellendale and Blooming Prairie, are looking at um, accessing some ship mini grants for bike mm -hmm. racks, mm -hmm. you know, at their school, bike racks at the library to make mm -hmm. it more friendly for kids and adults to get there using their feet mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and having a place safe for their their bike to remain mm -hmm. when they get out. Mm -hmm. So those are some ways, and, um, and we are, through the school site interventions, I, I think really trying to reach out to the commu those rural communities, because that is a major um, work site sure. in rural yeah. communities, is their schools. Sure. Yes. Yes. One of the sure. things that we're doing in Dodge County is um, each of the pools, there's a pool, four pools in Dodge County, owned by the, each of the cities, and we're sponsoring free swim days. So every Monday you can swim somewhere for free in Dodge County. So essentially it comes down to each pool being open three different times to anyone who comes in. And they can come in and experience the pool, and hopefully mm -hmm. they in turn will buy a membership and support that pool as well. But it's also getting people to other communities mm -hmm. to experience that community. Yeah, and more, we're also doing the open swim days in both Austin and in Adams so that, you know, you're not just focusing on that big city in your county, but really looking at everyone. And we also funded bike racks for every school district in the county. So even, you know, Lyle or some of these smaller schools where you may not necessarily think that kids are biking, they really mm -hmm. do walk and there's people or bike mm -hmm. who live nearby who want to bike. And so just providing that opportunity to everyone is also important as well. But it is a challenge to engage uh, a county where there are there's so much rural area, and each one of us mm -hmm. has that. Um, in Freeborn County, I chose to because I that communication piece is so ex so important. Uh, we developed a website called HealthyFreebornCounty.com, and then um, I have an a TV ad mm -hmm. called Active Freeborn County, and it directs you to the website. 
and on the website you see the interventions you there's a, a download for the mini grant if you're interested in your yeah, you know but it is a challenge to to really communicate with an entire county when there are so many small rural communities in in that section and we're all trying to collaborate and find those parties out there but we really encourage communities to contact public health mm -hmm. if they want right. to get engaged in the process because that's what we really need is people actively saying I want to partake how can I right you mentioned the the Freeborn County website does every county have their own website or is there one for the entire group no, no. no. Freeborn actually chose to do one we just chose to do one okay you know okay. Th so yeah. that was an option for all of us but yeah. mm -hmm. And I think it's a really cool option that they have mm -hmm. too. So. Yes, it's it's really been it's really been great for us. Okay. You know, okay. it's um, I mean thousands of hits. So one obviously of, people are going there, and that's that's what we wanted. Yeah. One mm -hmm. of the stipulations for ship monies is that whatever you put that money towards, it has to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. sure. And our problem was that we didn't know how to keep a ship website sustainable once we were done with the grant monies. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Ellen has the, the Blue Zone and right. the Vitality. I have two other and, coalitions to, and that so, can keep it going. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. Sure. Okay. As far so. as engaging the rural communities, I'm also working with our Trails Association. And yes. Right. And, they all are. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ultimate goal is to have trails throughout mm -hmm. the entire state yes. so you could bike mm -hmm. border to border. Right. So I'm working with them to try and promote the trails and mm -hmm. do some signage and bike mm -hmm. racks and things for yeah. them. Yeah. And the Stagecoach Trail is yep. a trail that runs right. through those counties, mm -hmm. right. the, yeah. the plans mm -hmm. for that, and we're trying to collaborate with yep. them as well. Well, I think you guys have uh, really started an amazing program, and uh, we look forward to definitely seeing more. And, and as the, so the, the web and everything else yeah. develops here, we'll see definitely more about this entire program. So, again, uh, thank you all for, you. for coming today and thank you for helping us. everyone know. So, okay. Well, this has been uh, Sean Riley with Health Connections. Thank you very much.